What if I told you that everything you've ever heard about cassettes has been a complete lie? Hey friends, welcome to Vinylize. I'm Jarrett New, and today we're gonna to be talking about why I bought a cassette deck in 2016. What, Jarrett, are you crazy? What's all this nonsense about cassettes? I'm here for vinyl records and vinyl records only. So make with the vinyl or else I'm gonna unsubscribe. Mer. Whoa, 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 hang on a second. Before you do that, let me explain myself. Okay, so I was browsing around on YouTube the other day and I came across a video that completely changed my mind about the way I view cassette tapes. The name of that video was called Cassettes, Better Than You Don't Remember. And it was from a YouTuber named Techmoan. His channel is all about old and new audio and video technology. And his videos are really informative and helpful. Now, in his cassette video, he talks about how most people think that cassettes sound terrible. And honestly, this is the lie that we've all been led to believe. So he argues that's actually a giant misconception. And his main point is this, if you have the right equipment and you know how to use it, cassettes can actually sound fantastic. This video completely blew me away and it encouraged me to do some more online research. And what I learned is that there are actually four different types of cassette tape. So here they are from from the crappiest to the highest quality. Type one, iron oxide. This is the average run of the mill cassette tape. These are the most common. Type two, chromium dioxide. This tape was a huge step up in musical fidelity. Type three, this is a mixture of type one and type two tape, and it never really took off because of its poor design. And finally, type four, metal tape. This is by far the best sounding tape formula that has ever been manufactured. And if you manage to find these online, they're usually really expensive. So here's why everyone thought that cassettes were sh the most common cassette players back in the day were both portable and pretty crappy. Kind of like how today's modern Crosley Cruisers are to records. It's the same deal. So here's what people used to do. They would take their portable boombox and record the radio on a Type 1 cassette. Do you see the problem with all that? That's like three separate levels of degradation in the sound quality. So of course that tape is gonna sound like garbage. Now, if on the other hand, you take a Type 4 metal tape tape and you record straight from your nice turntable directly into your quality cassette deck, that recording can actually sound amazing when you play it back from the cassette. So essentially, if you want, you can make your own authentic mixtapes, which is really cool. Now, let's finally talk about my cassette deck. I ordered the Sony TCKA1ES. This is an older model uh, and it's from 1995. So as of the making of this video that you're watching, it's 21 years old. And and it still looks and plays great. I got it off of eBay and it's clear that whoever owned this last was a true audiophile in every sense of the word and took very good care of it. Okay, now what I'm about to say next is very important. And if you're looking to get into cassettes nowadays, here's the best advice I can give you. First, choose a proper cassette deck over a portable player because they're much better quality. Second, modern cassette decks are not as good as the older models. So what you want to find is a cassette deck from the early to mid 90s when the cassette was at the height of its popularity. So cassette decks from 1990 to 1995 are going to have a lot of great features. Third, speaking of features, here's what you want to look for. Dolby B, C, and S noise reduction. Three tape heads and also go for a single cassette well, kind of like this one right here. The dual cassette decks are okay, but they're not as high quality. And Finally, fourth, although auto reverse might sound like a cool feature, I would actually recommend staying away from it because over time, the tape heads may become misaligned due to that flipping motion from the auto reverse. And when that happens, the sound won't be as good. So basically what I'm trying to say is less moving parts means that less things break, which is a good thing. Now, finally, we're past all the technical stuff. And if you're still watching this video and I haven't completely bored you yet, you might be thinking to yourself, do they still make cassettes? And the answer is absolutely yes. 
they do. There's one company based in the US called National Audio Company Inc. And they're still manufacturing blank cassette tapes in 2016. You can even find their high quality type two tapes on Amazon for a decent price. But let's say that you're not into making your own mixtapes and you just wanna listen to albums that people have already made. Well, I got great news for you because older albums on cassette can usually be found dirt cheap. I mean, they're practically giving these things away. If you have a cassette deck in 2016, you can go out to your local record shop or thrift store or even garage sale and find tons of classic albums on cassette for only a dollar each or even less. Really cheap. And it gets better. Let's say you're not into the old stuff and you want to find new music on cassette tape. Well, I got some more good news for you. A ton of independent cassette labels are popping up everywhere online. And if you're interested, here's a few sites you can check out. Sanity Muffin, United Cassettes, Burger Records, Lost Sound Tapes, Post Pop Records, Tape Club Records, and blue tapes. And those are just to name a few. These new cassette labels are fueling this brand new wave of what's being called cassette culture. And I think that's pretty cool. Also on average, these brand new cassettes tend to only be about five or $7 at the most, which is helpful to your wallet if you've already spent your entire allowance on vinyl. And a lot of the brand new albums you'll find on cassette in 2016 sound unlike anything else out there. Let me tell you guys, if you love discovering new music, there is a huge pool of really wild indie, garage rock, experimental, ambient, and eclectic music out there that you're only gonna find on cassette. And as far as the design goes, I like the cassettes are very portable. I mean, you can just stick one inside a pocket. You can't do that with a CD. Also, these things are way more durable than a CD because if a CD gets scratched, as we all know, it's gonna skip horribly. But with a cassette, this thick plastic housing does a pretty good job of protecting the music inside. So overall, I'm just super excited to be collecting tapes alongside vinyl records now because honestly, I just really love analog music regardless of the format. Also, this is very important, I'm not gonna be changing my channel name to Cassette Eyes, okay? So don't worry about that. But I will say one thing, I have no plans to be collecting eight tracks in the future, all right? That's probably where I draw the line. No offense to you if you collect eight tracks. Now, what do you guys think about cassettes? Do you mostly buy vinyl or have you been collecting cassettes as well? Let me know down in the comments below and if you enjoyed this video, join the vinyl revolution and hit subscribe because I'm gonna be coming out with a lot of great videos every week that you're not gonna wanna miss. Be sure to find me on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and more. All my social media links are down below and most importantly, friends, keep spinning that vinyl.